the book by Aldous Huxley is uh, well, basically embraced by the same people who now force this straight and well, you say see the rules on us. He wasn't inside that, he was told, okay, you can reveal some of the information, you can put it in your book, so you make it public, and nobody says we've done it in secret. So that's how it works, they put it uh, in some public space, like a film or a book, so everyone knows about it, it's in the public space. Um, so so you, you can't, can't really complain? Well, it's like, oh, it's in there. It's uh, like in uh, uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide, when one morning uh, the Earth gets a signal from a big ugly spaceship which says your planet is about to be demolished. We need to make a cosmic highway. <laughs> which is uh, what happened to the hero's house in the beginning. And what do you mean, never heard it? It's been on Alpha Centauri for 50 uh, human years. Years, and uh, what do you mean, never been to Alpha Centauri? Well, if you're so lazy, then it's your fault. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's the same what happened to the hero's house in the beginning. Like, so the construction plans been in, in, in the office for half a year. Well, nobody uh, told me about it. Yeah, but also, uh, the, the worker told me the uh, the morning before, and first he washed my windows, and I had to pay him for it. And then I went to the office, and the plants were in the cellar. Well, yeah, that's where we keep them. And there was no light, and no stairs. Yeah. And it was, well, you, you found it in the end, didn't you? Yeah, it was an old closed cupboard with a sign, beware of the leopard on it. So yeah, it's kind of in the public space and you can't say I didn't know because everyone knows about Huxley and Orwell and all these guys. Everyone's, uh, if not read them, but uh, heard about them, as I mentioned too. But today, today we have something more cheerful. Yeah. We have Death and Limington. Oh yeah. Been to Limington? No. Never. Can't even imagine where it is. Okay, we'll sort it out. But first, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. So, Death and Limington by. Is it? I think it should be working. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just see that the uh, head is cut. So there's some space. Uh, there's. Yeah, that's special one. Uh -huh. Okay, John Benjamin. Let's read it. She died in the upstairs bedroom by the light of the evening star that shone through the play glass window from over Linnington's bar. Beside her, the lonely crochet lay patiently and unstirred. For the fingers that would have worked it were dead as a spoken word. A nurse came in with the tea things, pressed high in the stands and chairs. But nurse was alone with her own little soul, and the things were alone with theirs. She bolted the big round window, she let the blinds unroll, she set the match to the mantle. She covered the fire with coal, and tea, she said in a tiny voice, Wake up, nearly fine. Oh, chinsy, chinsy cheeriness, half dead and half alive. Do you know that the stuck is healing? Do you know that the heart will stop? From those yellow Italianate arches, do you hear the plaster drop? Nurse looked at the silent bedstead, at the grey, decaying face, as the calm of a limited name drifted into the place. 
She moved the table bottles away from the back to the wall and tiptoeing gently over the stairs turned on the gas in the hall. Uh, I really like this one. Sort of reminds me of the listeners. There's something in the rhythm and in the and how it flows. What's your impression? Gets me, gets me shaking, sort of. Uh, is he parroting me? Uh, no. Uh, the uh, and uh, yeah, it reminds of uh, the listeners now that you mentioned it. And uh, maybe, maybe it's yeah, it's uh, something uh, really nice and uh, cozy, mm -hmm. something that is typical English pile of lock tea. That somehow, that some, somehow uh, turns out to be not what you really imagine. Uh, which is also which is also why we should probably remind ourselves that death is quite near, no matter what we think of it. Uh, and if I may just digress a bit, uh, it might also remind us to live each day as if it were the last day, which is, uh, I, I, I was, of course, uh, uh, in, uh, I was reading Vavilov's diaries, and Vavilov was a famous Russian scientist who thinks science is everything, and unless he does something, scientific he considers the day as being lost and then he often reminds himself live it as if it were the la your last day and somehow this poem mm -hmm. uh, may resonate yeah, with it. Although, like although, the old Tolstoy's diaries and letters yeah. where each time he finishes with like if i'm alive by yeah. the time yeah mm -hmm. and uh, that, 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 that's basically it the problem of course is that uh, and unlike Tolstoy or someone else, uh, I can't really imagine what it takes mm -hmm. to live each day as if it were my last day. Uh, what it takes, uh, and again, uh, people often people often uh, live. Uh, their last day, not even understanding mm -hmm. it's their last day, and not, not this sort, sort of, they can never imagine, okay, it might be tomorrow, not today. So th yeah, this is... This if is you really go into it, you may even remember that some day in the year is your death day. You know your birthday and you celebrate it or you don't celebrate it. Yeah. Somewhere there's the a secret part of death the day. Gra of your gravestone here. You know, some people uh, know. Yes. Some people know about the death dates. Yeah. Some people feel it, especially poets. Yeah. Okay. And some things. Mm -hmm. And that, that's. I think. I don't know because that's what I do. I. When I remember some days in my life, I think, okay, that was that was. Uh, that was, let's say, in the year 2015, and in two years' time, that person would be dead on that mm -hmm. same day. So, but that, that's I think the connection okay. that we often make. But let's get back. Yeah, but let's get back to. Yeah. Well, we you can uh, muse upon the subject for a very long time. So let's limit ourselves to the space of the poem, which is more specific. 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 So well, the title is Death and Limington. Okay, death is a good word to put in, in the title. Why Limington? Well, uh, 
What's so great about Limington? Well, the great thing about Limington is that no one has heard of it. Or maybe maybe everyone has heard of it except me, but I might imagine it's uh, something that no one has heard of. And it's something that sounds very English, very yeah. either small and nice mm -hmm. and... Uh, Which it is. It's uh, a village in England. It's not big. Yeah, so it's... and again, uh, someone who has been to an English village as you have. Have you? Have you? I think you have. Yeah. 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 Uh, knows how it looks like, but even someone who hasn't been, as mm -hmm. is the case with me, uh, is uh, well. It's easy to imagine how it looks like, and it looks it looks really peaceful, inviting, mm -hmm. and cozy. And that there's something something that's really that really is the opposite of death, maybe, or maybe, well, maybe it's, it's quiet, same. or maybe it's quiet and well, silent guess... in the evening. I guess, yeah, it's peaceful. Uh, if, if we think about the listeners, then we have that silence in a far away magical forest. But here it's any normal place. Limington is just next door. It's where you live. It's some real place. You don't need to go anywhere to find yourself there. That's so you. And that's Limington. The sounds tiny, limited, limited mm -hmm. lemons, limited. And familiar because there are lots of these inkton tom. Tom and tom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. She died in the upstairs bedroom. Well, we have uh, a few characters here. We have she. We have the nurse, we have the narrator. Yeah, so at least three characters. Uh -huh. And uh, the question is, uh, where do we feel ourselves in the poem? Do we feel ourselves as the nurse? Do we feel ourselves at peace with the dead lady? Do we feel uh, agitated? understood like uh, the narrator who, who can't understand or uh, the nurse. Yeah. So when we go we have a different perspective, different points of views and we connect with all of them and uh, feel how they respond to us. Okay, and um, what can we say about uh, the dead lady? Is she old? Is she young? What kind of a person she is today? Uh, I think she's an elderly lady uh, because uh, she probably does things that are typical for uh, elderly ladies. Mm -hmm. There's a crochet mentioned, so this is uh, traditionally associated with old mm -hmm. ladies who meet her or mm -hmm. whatever. What's the right word? Uh, um, also, the nurse is uh, necessary, which probably means that the lady isn't uh, strong enough to uh, live on her own. And again, uh, she might be a sort of, well, speaking sociologically, she might be a middle class lady. And uh, that's, uh, that's because uh, an upstairs bedroom is mentioned, so mm -hmm. we know that she owns, mm -hmm. or at least she has. She can allow she the nurse. And she can allow, yes, and uh, again, uh, those people used to have some servants, at least one servant, but here it's not a servant, it's a nurse, so it mm -hmm. means that her medical condition mm -hmm. does not allow her to, uh, to just have a, a servant or just uh, leave on her own. So she could is... be a social nurse yeah, 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 again. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that posh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, mm, uh, there's also something about this five o'clock tea mm -hmm. ceremony mm -hmm. that is about to begin but never happens mm -hmm. in this story, yeah. which is also 
old traditional quiet discourse. So there's lots of uh, uh, lots of things uh, associated with nice elderly mm -hmm. English ladies. Although there's nothing uh, contradicting all the idea that it's a young lady who got really sick. Could be the case. But how we feel is uh, a, a small stuff room with lots of things in it. Again, something that uh, yes, a person form. collects over a long life. Yeah. Well, then again, is there a family? Is there no family? Uh, we, we don't see it in the poem. Maybe it was a, a very lonely lady and she only had a nurse to look after her. Or maybe there was a family. But they were away for, for, for the evening, we don't know. Okay, okay. What uh, happened on the uh, ground floor, the first floor? Yeah, we don't know. Uh, again, uh, if we consider this as peaceful, as sort of a coda or something on mm -hmm. somebody's long life, then uh, it's uh, it's more or less uh, the peaceful atmosphere atmosphere is more or less understandable. If she is a young person, then we often tend to say, "Oh, she's too young to die," and then uh, there would be something violent about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have no mention of it in the poem, so we don't feel that way. We don't feel that way, so uh, again... Let me begin on how we read the poem can uh, change our uh, perspective. So on one hand, her death is peaceful. Uh, she's not fighting, she's not crying, she's not twisted, she's not in agony. Uh, she died, that's it. She died in the upstairs bedroom. Oh, but uh, uh, how the bedroom is described is important because a bedroom is a very private place. So when we talk about a house, we talk about a person who lives there, and a bedroom would be uh, the most private part, which again reveals uh, the person's nature. So uh, we, we don't have any description, we don't uh, have any words, just she, not even lady, not old woman, not name, nothing, just she. She died in the upstairs bedroom. So again, uh, she died, that's how we begin. Death and limited, she died. Uh, no surprises. And uh, you may say we don't make a, a big thing out of it, like, okay, she died. Uh, uh, the problem is that Death is mentioned in the heading. Mm -hmm. uh, Why is it a problem? And it is mentioned in the first line. And then there's a problem because, as far as I remember, uh, it's never mentioned. The death never gets mentioned anywhere else. So we have well, like dead as a spoken word and a grey decaying face. Oh, we don't focus on it. Mm, we don't. We don't focus on it. So. Uh, Basically, uh, there's something that is as a thesis stated in the mm -hmm. title and yeah. in the first line, and then it might sort of be developed, but again, uh, developed in a way that uh, developed in a way that uh, does not uh, repeat that 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 body. Mm -hmm. uh, something. We have it in it. We, we have, have it. We have it. But uh, I guess the idea of the poem is not to look at. Is that per uh, se as uh, just oh somebody died? Let's think about it. Let's look at it. But at the relationship yeah. between the nose and uh, death. Yeah, and the relationship between maybe the lady and the death because uh, we don't. If we were just told somebody died, we don't know anything about mm -hmm. this person. So looking, peeping into the lady's. Well, looking, I think she doesn't mind now. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at her bedroom, uh, which is a very private space, looking at the nurse, looking at what the nurse uh, yeah. does and this what the nurse used stuff. to do regularly, yeah. as far as I understand, bringing yeah. private property, yeah. allows us some insight into who yeah. the lady was. Mm -hmm. So she yeah. stops being just a dead body and instead 
uh, appears as a well as a human being who is alive or at least was alive a moment ago before we uh, found ourselves inside the poem. Should I in the upstairs bedroom by the light of the evening star? Yes. Can you see the light of the evening star through the door? The east wind. The wind is changing. Uh, someone, not a nurse, but a nanny, mm -hmm. is on her way to us. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so we have uh, uh, the settings which tell us it was a peaceful death, that it was a good death in the sense that she's upstairs, somewhere up. Uh, because we have light, we have the evening star. Why do we need to have the light of the evening star? Maybe like a guiding star? Uh, maybe like a guiding star, maybe because, again, uh, there's something mysterious about mm -hmm. stars, as there's a mystery about death. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, it only seems natural that uh, evening means the uh, death of a day, and uh, when someone dies in the evening, uh, lit by an evening star, uh, it's uh, it's uh, more or less peaceful because if you imagine someone dying in uh, bright daylight again, this happens all the time. But uh, probably there's no harmony about it because I was present when someone died uh, yeah. in mid sort of midday, uh, and there were people in the street, talking, shouting, uh, going about doing their thing. So they lived very loud lives. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the person was dying uh, in, uh, in a room. Uh, and that's, for me, that was a contradiction. I couldn't have, uh, I couldn't have uh, fixed but both both parts of this uh, puzzle together. Mm -hmm. they, 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 here, here it fits, it fits quite well. And uh, also, I don't know, uh, evening star is, uh, there's something romantic about stars mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, well, uh, there's something also, I think, when we just look into uh, the uh, into a sky when there are stars, uh, there's a feeling of loneliness that more or less descends on us. And uh, there's something lonely again because your death, this lady's death, is, your, is a very private individual thing. Yeah, well, so we don't have lots of stars, we just have one star yeah. which is connected to the yeah. day. Mm. Which is somehow we might imagine that her soul drifts away and finds mm -hmm. its place somewhere on that star, or at least that star is looking and saying final goodbye to this mm -hmm. lady. Yeah. Like that. So we have evening, we have bedroom, you may go to sleep or you may go to death. Yeah. Um, well, we can't oh no. It might not. It'll be on for seven more minutes. Seven more minutes, okay. So, uh, a light of the evening star that shone through the plain glass window from all the, over a limited spa. We have uh, the beginning and we have a lot of space in the beginning. And literal space like outer space with stars and space like air. Oh, she died in the upstairs bedroom, but we don't stay in the bedroom. Oh, it's big, a death is big, and immediately it's connected with something as great, big, we may say, uh, eternal, as a star. Uh, light shining, uh, we go outside, we see the sky, we see uh, mm -hmm. a limited spa. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, then again, what's the evening star? And Venus, the first star which you see, which is really bright, yeah. the evening star, Venus. Shown through a plate glass window. So again, we have a uh, uh, construction. Uh, we have a private space which belongs to you again, personally, which is your bedroom. Then we have a glass window, some opening, passage. And then we have the great big outside full of light, magic, space, air. Uh, or which you can connect to through that opening. So you have your identity, at the same time you're connected with the great big infinity. At the same time we kind of place it in a real place, because linked with spa, you can imagine it, you can see it, you can go there. So, on one hand it's uh, magical, at the same time it happens just next to you. Yeah. And uh, why do they, why does he mention the plate glass window? Is it just to make the picture more realistic to help us well, when it's an uh, upstairs bedroom, so apparently she's somewhere up in the attic. Maybe she's like one of those uh, forgotten old people who are put in the attic, like old things. So it's uh, logical that uh, there would be a round window, a plate glass window, round window. Uh, I, I guess it's to show us uh, that the room is really small. It's just under the ceiling, not just upstairs, it's a small place on the ceiling. And we, we have that contrast of, uh, between a small stuffy room and a big outside, a small life and big eternity. Uh, but again you may say plate glass window with something around and again reminds you of a circle, infinity something more natural than a square window. You choose it. Maybe it's a framing the star more beautifully, round frame. Uh, that doesn't does necessarily mean that there are no other windows in the room. Uh, not necessarily, uh, but apparently because we have a there window. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably okay. the one window. window. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't really imagine a room with a number of different uh, windows, all different shapes and sizes. Apparently, if it's uh, the attic, uh, then that is what you expect to see. Just, just one round window. And again, uh, it's high. It's the uh, same level as the star. In a way, in a way. But the star is outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Along the stars. Okay, beside her the lonely crochet lay patiently and unstirred. But the fingers that would have worked it were dead as a spoken word. Maybe he says crochet to, to run who worked it. I don't know. Now what do we have here? Well, we have something personal here. We did have uh, her bedroom, sort of, which was again uh, only partially visible Is to it us. Seven minutes yet? Okay, let's do, do a restart. Anyway, yeah, fifty seconds left, so it's about okay. time. It's about time. Stop. And yes. Outside, we felt what was outside the potential. Uh, then we are back to the private space here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there's this lonely crochet is something that 
uh, well, across she had something that uh, she used, she worked as uh, the uh, writer says. Uh, so we, again, we might uh, imagine the lady's character easily, so she's the sort of the lady who uh, knits. Uh, uh, again, this is a very peaceful thing to do, and uh, uh, there are more words that remind us uh, of this peaceful atmosphere. It lay patiently, it lay unstirred, uh, and uh, the things that uh, that uh, make it uh, a reminder of the lady's death are first that the, the crochet is described as lonely. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing, crochet is a thing, but the thing has lost. Uh, an important part of itself as the lady died. Or you may say it describes the lady. Or it describes, yes. A lonely crochet in the sense uh, that she was alone there, that yeah. either uh, she yeah. was just alone or she was forgotten by her family who lived downstairs. Yeah. She felt lonely. And then, then, then again, if she. Uh, if but then again, we, we might say it's uh, uh, getting tragic at that point. If she were forgotten by her family, who did she need? Uh, who did she meet these things for? She might have. So she was forgotten, but uh, she did not forget that she has a family and they uh, might benefit well, from getting a hobby, because some people do it just because they like doing it, not for somebody, just for the sake of doing it, because they enjoy yes. it. And she, she's got lots of things in her room, maybe she just uh, likes things. But uh, again, uh, live patiently unstirred. Yeah, that reminds of her. Mm -hmm. She's now lying patiently unstirred and she's going to continue lying patiently so through the rest of well, mm -hmm. what, what, what the remains of this yeah. world. Mm -hmm. So the crochet and other things are alive here, or people are like things, or things are like people. So here crochet has a kind of a character. Yeah, lots of character. Mm -hmm. Shall we try and close the door? Yeah, might be a good idea. If, if it can be. That will be better. So There's a heart, here. somebody's heart. Oh, good. Yeah, so with love to yeah. everyone in the other list cafe. Okay, okay yeah. Oh, the patient can also, yeah, like uh, it could be uh, the woman, could be her thing. Now, if we kind of look closer, then why crochet? You may again uh, say, ah, oh, maybe it's like a uh, work you do during your life and it's unfinished because death doesn't care whether you finish your crochet or not yeah, again uh, it's like oh i can't die today i still have business to do like um okay you, you can just forget about it uh, then again uh, crochet is related to weaving to threads Again, like destiny, like connection between people. Uh, yeah, sort of lifeline, something. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, I'm not sure I can really imagine a crochet because I've never used it. Uh, but uh, it hasn't got a shape that might remind us of an elderly person stooping. As no, some, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. No. Then uh, another thing that... It may be something that a young woman does in yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not so. really uh, marked, like, oh, it's only for old ladies. It depends on time, culture, the person, obviously. Uh, I'm reminded of something I was uh, uh, 
told a story of Danish ladies back in the 18th and early 19th century who used to who used to make lace mm -hmm. uh, and there were two uh, uh, this, this was a story told by a director of the museum where this lace was uh, exhibited and uh, the thing was that uh, the lady who told the story was more interested in sort of social circumstances that mm -hmm. and uh, each of the lace makers, each of these ladies who made lace, uh, had a special book where she recorded how much lace she's done on a particular day. One thing uh, you notice is that in winter time they do much less because, the it's, darker. because it's darker and they can only use uh -huh. natural light or they might use a special lamp, but again, in the 18th century, mm -hmm. it's not of much help. And of course, it's interesting also to see that the lady begins doing that when she's a very young, very young yeah, girl, yeah. and she continues throughout the rest of her life. And then again, you might imagine how uh, the amount of mm -hmm. lace mm -hmm. being worked um, uh, subsides as she gets older, older and older, and then there are these records disappear. Mm -hmm. So it's somehow, again, a story of somebody's life that is yeah, told it's, through it's, an inanimate really object. It's like, visible, illustrative, because you yeah. can really see it. Of course, it doesn't have to be a thing. It can be just uh, any kind of work that you're doing. And uh, uh, maybe another thing that connects it, at least to me, it makes it this connection with lace is that lace disappears as machines are introduced. So how well, does it disappear? Well, it's a, yeah, but it only exists as a hobby. Lace. Yeah, as a mm -hmm. as a hobby, mm -hmm. at least in Denmark today. Well, I think it's a good thing, really. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, well, it, I'm, but but uh, this is also true for this lady mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. in our little story, because uh, she does something that is. Uh, Possible for a machine to do, but she prefers to knit it herself. Again, we well, might imagine to again, whom? No, not really. Not really. Not really. It's not like, oh, I need to get some nice crochet. Oh, maybe I should buy it. Maybe I should make it. No, she she sits in her room, and nobody visits her except uh, the nurse who comes uh, maybe two, or three, five times a day. So she has literally nothing to do. She has only a small window where she can only see a bit of the sky. Yeah, she can't see the street, she can't see people. She only can see a little bit of the sky from there. And we don't even know if she can see it from her bed. Uh, so well, no, what is she do? Uh, again, again, do we know that uh, is she is she really bedridden? Maybe she's not. Well, we can guess. Because otherwise, why the nurse yeah. and why the upstairs bedroom and the table okay. bottles? Okay. Okay. Apparently, at least that's how we feel about it, about all the uh, signs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, uh, the crochet lay patiently, like uh, waiting for her to mm -hmm. come back and to continue, and in a sense. Uh, Again, uh, there's kind of a double feeling about it. We have patience, we have peace here, we have calm here. We don't feel like, oh no, she's dead! Oh, horror, horror! Uh, no, it's like waiting. At the same time, uh, maybe it's uh, about ourselves to call. Maybe we are not really patient, but we kind of have the idea, oh, that is not real. Uh, it's, it's like... Uh, He's not dead, he just went for a holiday, or she, in this case. So the crochet lays patiently like, okay, maybe not, not, not this evening, maybe next evening. I mean, I'm stirred. It's interesting because stirring the crochet you know, is an unusual phrase. The fingers that would have worked it where that is a spoken word. Okay, fingers would have worked it again. You may say that it's about uh, work you do mm -hmm. in your life. I think it's not hot. Where that as a spoken word is interesting. Oh, what is here? 
Uh, it's interesting because the spoken word is seen as a dead word, and yet what we have in here in the poem are all spoken words. Well, when we read it, when when you when you read it, when, it, when uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, does it mean that death is too big and too mysterious for someone who can only use spoken words to comprehend and to describe? Well, as an infinity in general, because it cannot be languaged, it's unlanguageable by definition, because language is used to describe things how we perceive things, what we make of things, because obviously it's much more than a cup or tea or yeah. vapor table. And if you say that each person who leads his or her life has his or her own language and what we have to do in order to understand that person is to sort of translate, yes, it's open again. We live in a habit hole. Pokemon Go. We do need the sign, like a billboard. Hmm? What do we do? We need a, a sign to put it on the door, like in the Hobbit in the beginning, where he said, oh, come on me on party business. Yeah. Uh... So we might get back to uh, the spoken words. We might imagine each person as having his or her own specific language that is only uh, uh, comprehensible to us if there is some translation present. But uh, the thing about translation is that it, uh, there's something lost in translation mm -hmm. all the time. No, so uh, that, that makes it a bit of. We translate ourselves into language. It doesn't matter which language. Even if it's your native language, you still translate your unlanguageable into things and it's never correct. It's always only an approximation. Yeah. But that's the only thing that word is dead because it cannot reflect. It cannot reflect and of course there's the truth and we can only approximate the truth. And maybe if we are very smart people, we can come nearer and nearer and nearer. But the problem is that each time uh, we discover something new mm -hmm. and true about this world mm -hmm. and the mysteries of this world, our previous knowledge might be discarded because it appears as being untrue. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, there's uh, something dead about this sort of word because uh, each uh, sort of approximation of truth uh, becomes a lie as we mm -hmm. uh, make another, yet another step towards yeah, it's truth. It's about your acuteness, let's say, because at some stage you just don't care, the approximation works just fine, but uh, when you go into finer and uh, finer, let's say, settings, sensations, perception, uh, then uh, you just can't use the old words because uh, they're plainly wrong. You feel uh, the uh, discord, discordant is the word. So you can't, you can't use, you know how you feel, you know the word you're supposed to be using, but you can't say it because you feel it's uh, wrong. Like if, if you say somebody, it's not a problem, but then you feel, ah, somebody, like a thing, ah, that's not somebody I'm talking about. So you say someone instead, for instance. So we're dead as a spoken word. Well, you may say that something a bit, you know, from the Eastern philosophy, where the unspoken tells you more than the spoken. 
again, you need to, to know well, the measure. Otherwise, you just have a cage with his, what is, four minutes of silence, and say, oh, that's the best music for each of it. You may argue it. But still, we have uh, fingers were dead as ward. So fingers create work, and ward creates works. Well, oh, yeah, now it's all dead. Now we have the nurse coming in. Mm -hmm. We looked at the lady, at her character. We have some ideas of where she is, of her relationship with the infinity. Now we have someone alive and uh, we immediately connect ourselves with this character just by the virtue of being alive. A nurse came in with the tea things, breast high with the stands and chairs. But the nurse was alone, her own and soul, and the things were alone with theirs. So again, we have a nurse, and uh, not uh, someone else. How do we feel about it, nurse? Well. Nurse, we are happy to see the nurse because she's the only, the only someone who's alive. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, she appears to be energetic, breast high, uh, so she. Mm -hmm. No, 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 she's not energetic. Breast high, like things are all around her. Yeah, yeah. So she has I, to I mean, swim through. I her. mean, yeah, but still, mm -hmm. she has that energy, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. uh, that, and of course, she has to because she's a nurse. Well, a nurse uh, is uh, by uh, uh, by definition uh, someone who uh, uh, takes care of patients mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. takes care of mm -hmm. uh, children. And, uh, and has no life of her own. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. In a sense, in a sense, again, like um, when we looked at that uh, silly song from uh, Beauty and the Beast cartoon, like a, ser a servant uh, has no soul unless the servant serves or something. <laughs> So I guess she's one of those people who don't have their own uh, personality or ideas. Who only uh, exists as functions. Well, yeah, because uh, we, we, her own little soul and she's like things. And again, a nurse is not like a doctor. She is important, obviously, very important, but again, you may say, maybe. And not that important. All things she does, again, could be uh, rather mechanistic. Bring the pills at that time, bring tea at this time, tidy up at that time. So a nurse came in, we have an intrusion. Uh, stirring again. The things are unstirred, now we stir them. Yeah, and that's where things really appear in the poem because she comes in with the tea things mm -hmm. and the things are repeated in the last line. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so the, the question is uh, is there anyone really alive? Uh, Maybe the lady was really alive and she was doing her crochet in the sense that she did something meaningful or creative at least. Well, not at least, creative, meaningful. But now it's all things, things and things. Or maybe again it's about the lady who spent her life surrounded by things and never by people, including inside her, 
into her soul, because again, the bedroom describes your soul, and uh, this soul is filled with uh, things, things, dead things, or living things, tea things. So, yeah, we had our uh, fingers. When we look at the lady, we see breast. When we look at the nose, again, uh, breast like a uh, symbol of, could be a symbol of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's where you have your heart, where you have lungs. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. oh, and we have a look at the bedroom now. The bedroom that includes the stands and the chairs, uh, so it's full of things. Mm -hmm. And again, we might. I oh, know it's a small room, yeah. just the, the attic. And now we see that it's uh, really full of things. So, is it a nice place there? Well, maybe it is, because maybe uh, things only are only. Uh, tends to uh, be collected by this lady because these things uh, are not just things but they serve the purpose of reminding her of someone, uh, some people she loves and likes, maybe some people who uh, only rarely visit her. We have a room full of chairs. It looks a, a bit strange considering that uh, she's all alone there. Maybe it is really like uh, the attic where they put all the old things, including uh, the old uh, auntie or somebody, granny. Well, they don't think of the family, if there's a family, they don't think about her as a human being, as a person. She's just another uh, half-broken, unbroken thing to be put away in the attic with the old stands and chairs because she wouldn't need all the chairs if she is just sitting in her, staying in her bed all the time and if nobody comes to visit her yeah, Maybe it's like no one comes to visit her and these chairs just stand empty, gathering mm -hmm. dust mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, if you only have one little window and apparently it would be dark uh, apparently there's a lot of dust in there because you have lots of things so uh, the nurse can't even uh, come to the uh, bed uh, normally she has to kind of make her way mm -hmm. through the room so it's really really full of stuff uh, then again we have the idea of loneliness a lonely crochet now, the nurse was alone, her own little soul, the things are alone with theirs. So uh, apparently, again, referring to the lady who was uh, lonely, uh, maybe, maybe trying to fill uh, the void, uh, the loneliness with things, which obviously never works, maybe. And uh, the nurse here kind of blends in with the stands and chairs. And then it's interesting that the things were alone with their own mm -hmm. souls. Uh, so on one hand, the things uh, here do have their souls. Mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, more or less animate objects. And here there are objects which are uh, alone, so each and every thing here is alone. The lady is alone, the uh, nurse is alone, and each of the many things is not just things, mm -hmm. but each of them mm -hmm. is alone. So there's a feeling of lots of things that are, lots of things of people that are very, very uh, lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, again, like we mentioned before, they affect each other. The nerves of people are like things, and things are like people. And then again, uh, I guess that's a question of uh, a small person, let's say. A small person 
meeting or something as big and real as death, uh, can you take it? Can you even oh, take it? Or maybe you can't. Can the camera take it? Oh yes, for five more minutes, but let's yep. restart. Restart. Multi later, yes. Becomes. Yeah. So everyone is alone, and when you meet your death, you're alone, even if you're surrounded by things or yeah. people. You're always alone. Yeah, but so how she much does... So alive, but yeah. she's alone, or the lady is dead and alone, it makes no difference. Yeah, and how much does the nurse really know about this uh, dead lady? Again, she might be a nice nurse, mm -hmm. uh, the lady might be a nice lady, but do they really know much about each other? The lady, if the things are reminders of uh, the events in the lady's life, she can probably tell uh, their stories to the nurse, but is the nurse really interested? If mm -hmm. she's not, then mm -hmm. the things are left alone. Mm -hmm. with their own souls because we we do it, it might be it might be a very bad thing to do but we often uh, attribute special meanings to things mm -hmm. uh, and then we, we might end up with lots of things that are only sort of uh, reminders symbols uh, symbols, cool. symbols and that or might images. be yeah and that might be sort of that might be a reflection of the fact that we only have symbols mm -hmm. of life instead of having mm -hmm. real lives. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So the nurse is also kind of non-discreet. Uh, nurse and she and nothing else. So the lady is just she. So we have she, lady and she, the nurse, but it's just she. Uh, maybe there's no difference between them again. She is she, and the nurse is she, and there's no description. Cause, and uh, there wouldn't be, because uh, the, the idea is uh, everyone dies eventually. So it makes, uh, again, no difference whether it's the lady who's dead or the nurse who's dead. And in a way, the nurse is already dead. She's not uh, living her life. She bolted the big round window. She left the blind in a row. She set the match to the mantle. She covered the fire with coal. So she doesn't notice that the lady is dead. Again, you may say it's too big to be registered in her mind, in her perception. It's too big for her. Uh, what does she do? So she, first of all, she attends to things first. She doesn't come to bed first to see like, how are you doing this evening, miss, such, such. Yeah, no, so she goes around, she tidies up all. She behaves like uh, she's uh, the owner. Like, uh, she, again, she's connected with things, the uh, window, the blinds, the match, the mantle, coal. But what is she doing? Uh, we have the window, big round window, which was plate glass window before. Now mm -hmm. we can see it, uh, I know, better. Can we see it better? Can we imagine it? Yeah, and what she does to it Or is... maybe again, it's plate glass, which is more interesting, but she just sees big round window, which is less imaginative. Mm -hmm. yeah, and what she does to it is she bolts it. So the room, which is full of things, is, it becomes a room isolated from mm -hmm. the rest of the world. So mm -hmm. it's like a small prison cell. Bubble. Yeah, or a small bowl. Uh, she bolts the window. Uh, she sort of uh, allows some freedom to the blind. She lets them. But what she lets them no. to do is she lets it's them unroll. So basically. Instead of uh, instead of letting go, she sort of further isolates the window. She yeah. She sort well, of. it's not like uh, it's freedom. 
Uh, it's all yeah. oh, the tendency yeah. Yeah. for the small thing for room of soul oh, to be. Um, I, I don't know, is it afraid of infinity? Is it being uncomfortable about infinity? Oh, to, to isolate itself from infinity, that's a tendency. So you need to work, you need to work to keep it open. It's like uh, water tends to run down. That's not always the case. So uh, she let the blinds and roll again. She let them do. She did not do anything. She let uh, thinkful nature take its course. And here we have the word blind. We have the word bolting. Oh, good. Well done. She bought the big round window, she left the blinds on the roll, so now it's uh, isolated, it's dark, there's no air. She set a match to the mantle. Yeah, which uh, m means there's no air and uh, there's going to be very hot. Mm -hmm. In sign the room, and again, we don't know whether this is being done because the lady, uh, the dead lady, uh, used to like mm -hmm. uh, when it was hot, or maybe it's because the nurse thinks it's much better for someone. Or maybe it's her program. That's what you do when you enter the room. Yeah. You. Yeah, so she, she's programmed to bolt the window, she's programmed to, uh, yeah, to... And uh, uh, the, the last line, she covered the fire with coal, fire which is alive and coal which is uh, dead. Yeah. Again, it's a, a normal uh, like yeah. tradition to, to compare. This is also down to the window, because mm -hmm. the window was a window to the world outside mm -hmm. and now it's covered. Mm -hmm. uh, with the blinds and... Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. On one hand it's all normal, uh, that's what you do, that's what you may do in the evening, uh, cover the fire with coal, again something normal, but in, in that context uh, you just start speaking, just um, covering the fire with coal. And uh, in a way it reminds me of like Bradbury and uh, his uh, short story about an automatic house which just uh, continued doing its task when uh, the owners were long dead. It was filling in the baths every evening, uh, making uh, breakfast and dinner and setting it and then washing the dishes and doing all of that, it would, it would continue until just uh, infinity, but it's a, a thing, so it got broken in the end and uh, it caught fire. But it's, yeah, it's interesting because it looked like a strange fiction uh, some 50 years ago when Bradbury was mm -hmm. writing this, and smart home is a thing well, of today. It's not, it's not that uh, strange, because the ideas were uh, already out. Yeah, there is, uh, and I think yeah, I, I think there it's also, also bits in some films, French films, I think, where they have all these automated uh, things. So happen. again, the nurse here isn't different from that automatic uh, mm -hmm. house. She comes in, she does what she's programmed to do, and it doesn't matter if the lady is alive or if the lady is dead. It's not in the program. Again, it's like what happens uh, now everywhere with the, uh, the uh, virus where people tell you, oh, you need to put on the mask again or things. But if you ask them why, they can't tell you, they don't know. It's just, well, we've been told you must wear a mask. Why? Well, just do it or go away. Okay, but uh, why? We really don't know we were told to do it. Yeah, again, just a mechanistic and uh, where is life and where is uh, the person? Yeah. 
And of course, it's connected. Mm -hmm. In our minds, the mask is connected with something that really is not mm -hmm. personal. Or uh, inanimate or not personal, also people yeah. look all the same, they don't have faces. And again, a mystery, but a, a bad, a tragic sort of mystery, like the Iron Mask. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, then again, uh, well, each age, each age in human history, we have some inventions, and immediately we start uh, relating our philosophy to the new inventions, like the steam machine, and immediately we have ideas like stress and letting the steam out and all of that. And now we have computers, and uh, kind of, uh, we are uh, sort of obsessed with machines, and so we start relating to the machine. But uh, the game is going just a bit too far. Like uh, the uh, Matrix film done some damage. So now people think, oh, maybe it's not a real reality, maybe it's a computer reality. Yeah, so really, it, it happened the other way around. First, you have real reality, then you draw some ideas from it, like a computer simulation, which is meant to reflect real life. And then you look at that reflection and you start your back on that. So you get it all backwards, really. So here too we have it all backwards. Instead of coming to the bed first, who is the most important in the room? The lady. The nurse, her programming does not include it. So she does, okay, first I do this, that, 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 and only then I come to see the lady. Okay. Let's, let's, let's have a, let's have a break. Let's have a little break. Some things, some things, some things. <laughs> Recording. Tea things. things. So tea again is uh, something regular, something programmed. Yes, yeah, something programmed to happen at five. Chinese, all dead and half alive. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I haven't tried it before. Yeah. Yeah. The first spoken yeah. word. I need some telekinesis forces. Force. Maybe there's, there should be a cord or something. Oh, like in Star Wars. Use the force. Use the force to close the door. Use the force to close the door. Yeah, yeah, I did it. Ray, I did it. I closed the door by using force. I think we scared this lady to death because oh, she couldn't even okay. open another door. She was trembling. Okay, and uh, she speaks uh, in like tiny words and tiny phrases which again don't really mean anything much. 
And again, we might say she doesn't begin by asking how the lady was. Mm -hmm. She immediately says see, which is... In a tiny voice, like again, she is shy to speak. Uh, yeah. Um, and of course, uh, had she asked the lady, how are you? That would be, that might have looked better, but again, the question how you are is uh, not something that really requires an honest and detailed answer, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. just as mechanical as anything else. Mm -hmm. So tea serves the purpose just as fine. Yeah. Tea, she said in a tiny voice, so we have little soul and tiny voice. Again, we have the presence of something as big and infinite as death. So we already have it. We don't need to to focus on it too much. We already have it. We feel it. We know it's there. Remember it. So we can look at uh, the relationship. She said in a tiny voice, wake up, it's nearly five. So again, like the crochet lays patiently, like oh, she shall wake up maybe next month, maybe next month. So here, uh, again, it's too big, too big to be even uh, seen, perceived. Uh, she looks at the dead lady and uh, she's like, well, she can't be dead. She's asleep. No, it's an ex-lady. Wake up, it's nearly five. So that's a very early evening then. So maybe it's winter. Maybe it's winter or late autumn. Because if it's if the evening star is out already and it's dark enough to close the door the window and to unroll the blinds. Uh, maybe it's winter. Well, and and yeah. uh, that would explain uh, yeah. the fire. Yeah, that would explain the fire. Then again, it would mean uh, that uh, the lady was alone in a cold room before it. But uh, the fire went out, and again, nobody cared. Nobody came to look how it was going. Again, room. And then, like you say, we have a 5 o'clock tea. And uh, if we consider it's the nurse, it's the lady who stays in bed, can't do anything much, uh, then apparently the lady is, well, wasn't uh, well, and everybody understood that she didn't have much to leave. So we have it uh, cheeriness, like, ah, oh, it's nothing, it's, it's nothing. Just behave normally, because to stop and to think would be too much for my program. Tea, wake up, it's nearly five. Again, uh, it was... Uh, Apparently normal for the nurse to come into the room and to see the lady asleep, again indicating a, a serious illness. So uh, you, you could think uh, that uh, the lady's death was expected. It uh, hadn't come just out of the blue. The lady knew it was coming, the nurse knew it was coming, but uh, we don't know how the lady died, she, she just died. But uh, we can see that the air, the uh, surroundings, it's all peaceful and quiet. Yeah. For the nurse it's just like alien. Chinsy, chinsy cheeriness, how dead and half alive. That's where the narrator comes in starting to comment. Well, we could 
feel uh, how the narrator uh, related to it, how he felt about it by the kind of words he was using. Now he shows uh, him, uh, himself clearly. Oh, chinzy, chinzy, cheeriness. You can just feel him speaking it out. Chinzy, chinzy, cheeriness. Oh, bless you. I didn't sneeze. What's chinzy? Isn't it a word the writer invents? I never, I never really looked it up in a dictionary. I just thought it was something that only belongs to this poem. Well, chinze is like uh, you have a fabric, uh, like cotton fabric, which is like light fabric, and you have a uh, stamped images like flowers, like uh, a little bit like uh, wallpaper okay. uh, bought on fabric. It's usually like bright little flowers with the repeated uh, patterns. images, patterns. Okay. So it's uh, cheerful, it's nice, maybe a bit too bright, maybe not, could be nice. Chinsy chinsy cheeriness. So apart from it sounding like chinsy, you, you're chinsy. Oh. And apart from it being a funny word, what else is about it? Maybe it's kind of old-fashioned, because if you imagine a chintzy fabric, chintzy dress, maybe you, you don't really see it on a young girl today. Maybe you think about old times, maybe. But I guess it's about, again, printed patterns with repeating something common, something. Again, not serious, like superficial, cheesy cheeriness. So it's like uh, she pretends to be cheerful because it's her job. She doesn't feel like it. She's not, uh, she doesn't feel the other way either. Just she feels nothing but like, okay, I'm supposed to be cheerful, I'm cheerful. Again, mechanistically. Yeah. So, half dead and half alive. The lady is complete. The lady is honestly dead. But the nose is. Oh, is in trouble really. She's neither here nor there. She's not complete. She's in between life and death. She's suspended. It's suspended animation, as they say. How dead, half alive. She can't uh, make herself whole. Which again might be just her way to adjust to the situation. Uh, if you're a nurse, if you only deal with sick people, you might either uh, try and uh, connect with each and every one, mm -hmm. or you might only have this superficial connection where you uh, bring them tea, where you make sure that they aren't cold and you uh, you mm, take care of their medical necessities and do nothing else then you sort of are a function and mm -hmm. you don't uh, that's I think what they well, call the alienation of, you're alienated from the kind of makes sense or uh, in the sense of your health yeah because uh, you start picking it up without thinking about it. And there has been a real study and uh, the nurses who look after elderly people, they do show the signs, like uh, the same signs that the elderly people have. Like they have uh, worse memory, they have more illnesses. 
And uh, on the contrary, people who work with children are generally more full of energy. Because we, we do pick it up, we, we do connect with the, the people. Yeah. So maybe in that way it makes sense. Yeah, yeah to it's like a protective kind of response. Mm -hmm. But here she, she, she has a little soul and her voice is mm -hmm. tiny. So maybe she just doesn't know how to be herself. So she's not dead, but she's not really alive either. What's the secret of being to oneself? Oh, just be. Be like a bee. Be three, okay. Mm -hmm. so do you know the stock is feeling? So now it's just uh, him coming out from the shadow. Mm -hmm. Like a Gandalf. Do you know From the cupboard. Uh, do you know that the stock is green? Do you know the heart will stop? From those yellow Italian torches, do you hear the plaster drop? So like so I am present. And again it's uh, why, why, why? Uh, will the nurse hear him? Why would he speak out? Because he's so much outraged that uh, the nurse would ignore something as big and obvious as the lady's death. Even though the nurse's main idea is to see whether the person is dead or not yet. <coughs> in, in a way. In a way. Yeah, so now he can't uh, keep silent anymore. He's uh, watching the nurse and he's just too full of this uh, indignation. Ah, you're how bad! Can't you see it? And uh, he talks to all of us. Because uh, we all find ourselves in that position where we prefer to turn a blind eye onto serious things and questions. We don't like to think about death. We don't like to think about illnesses. So the nurse is, should be like a, a, a shaman, uh, someone who goes into death and sickness and uh, goes out and can come in touch, but uh, she doesn't do it. She's there, she's in that position, but she just ignores it. It's like, why are you doing it if you're not doing it properly? You're killing yourself. Nothing else. So he, he can't uh, watch her anymore. He comes out, and, but, but she never hears. Or maybe she does, maybe she does. Because uh, it's after his words that she notices that, oh, the lady's dead. Oops. Oh, and does she notice it? Well, she notices. She notices after, after he talks to her. Even if she doesn't hear him, she can uh, kind of feel or perceive his... Uh, ideas or thoughts or messages. Do you know the stock is peeling? Do you know the heart will stop from those yellow Italianate arches? Do you know, do you hear the plaster drop? No, it's uh, kind of funny because uh, there's a dead lady and he's talking about the stock which is peeling and plaster which is dropping. Again, we mix things and people and people and things. The oh, game, the people, the game, things. Yeah, the house as a representation of a person. Uh, well, let's say uh, board is like a house needs looking after and uh, still eventually uh, falls apart. Do you know this type is peeling? So again, it's something small, maybe it's somewhere under the ceiling where you can't really notice it, but it's there, it's there, it's coming, it's doing a little work. 
again, uh, do you know this duck is peeling? And suddenly we can see it, we focus on it, we can uh, see it in kind of a uh, 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 funny way of filming things, and you can hear it uh, in a kind of exaggerated way, with small sounds of which of this duck is peeling. And do you know that the heart will stop? Okay, we may not care much about some old stucco which is peeling, but uh, we do care about the heart which will stop because it's not just uh, somebody's heart, it's uh, your heart, my heart, his heart, her heart, everybody's heart will stop eventually. From those yellow tiny arches, do you hear the plastic drop? So we uh, have another look at the room and again we see it differently. First we see it as a private space connected to big infinity outside. Then we see it's small, stuffy, full of things. Now it's uh, dark because uh, the blinds are rolled. Unrolled, and uh, now we see that it's decaying. It's uh, it's a bubble, but uh, the bubble is not eternal. The bubble is already deconstructing. Now, why do we need these funny words like stucco, and uh, why do we need yellow Italianate arches? It's living term, it's not, uh, it's not uh, too fashionable, just old living term. Maybe it used to be much different when the lady was younger and healthier. Yeah. Uh, there was something special about her home, which included this Italian looking mm -hmm. arches mm -hmm. and that which was uh, in a much better shape, not probably stuffed with things, but just yeah. So it's a sort of a reminder that the lady was uh, sick, and her house reflects uh, the sickness. She is decaying. And the house is decaying too, and we can see uh, the house uh, takes uh, longer to die uh, in comparison mm -hmm. to the lady. There's still something happening. The plaster is dropping. The stucco is peeling. Uh, well, maybe if you think about it as a film, uh, it could be. Also, you have the quietness, the silence stillness and then you have uh, you, you cut to the dramatic uh, scene of destruction where everything just explodes and falls apart and then you come back to it keeping that in mind it used to be fancy but it doesn't matter if it's fancy or plain it all will end nurse looked at the silent bedstead at the grey decaying face as the calm of a limited evening drifted into the place so she, she heard the message she finally something changed inside her perception it took her some time to notice, to uh, accept she, it. Did, 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 did she notice? Does she really notice? Yeah, because she goes away. Well, she, uh, that, that doesn't she go away because she thinks the lady is fast asleep and she tiptoes later on uh, down the no, hall and no. turns the gas down so that... No. Yeah. Because, look, the okay. uh, nurse looked at the silent bedstead. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's silent. We understand it. Bedstead, interesting, because it's like the frame of the bed, not the bed itself. 
So uh, again, she can feel that there is something too heavy to look at it directly. But uh, she needs to look at the frame first, then to move yeah. uh, slowly to the and face. And she doesn't look at the silent lady. Uh -huh. The lady is replaced by bed stead. Yeah, because we have stands. Yeah. Oh, oh, stands and chairs, bed stead and all thing in the thankful room. And then she looks at the grey decaying face, which is obviously like dead, because it's decayed. Does it mean that the lady was there for a long time? So that even her flesh started to decompose. And the nurse never noticed the smell. Maybe. Then it's really creepy. Or maybe you decay in the sense which is just dead and starting to decay in the sense that there is no life in it now. As the calm of the living the evening drifted into the place, so she had the understanding, it drifted into place. And now the calm of the living the evening, or in other words, in that uh, context of the presence of death, drifted into the place. Now it made sense. In the calm of the evening, it was like death, yeah? So death is something uh, peaceful, natural, like the evening. And it drifts into the place, the same as, uh, as when we think about the listeners, all the last lines, and, uh, the silence slowly surged backwards and the plunging things are gone. A silence always comes back. So here the same, the calm of the evening comes back. Uh, you can't bolt away from it, you can't hide from it. You can bolt all the windows, you can unroll all the blinds, you can turn a blind eye to everything, it will still find you. Because uh, it's drifting, it's not substantial. So uh, you're trying to uh, separate yourself by using things, like a bolted window or blinds. But that is not a thing, so it drifts through. It's everywhere, like like fog, like air. It finds you. The calm of a limited living drifted into the place. Mm -hmm. So it sort of drifts, it dawns on her, I mm -hmm. think, and the calm that marks this uh, final quietness that is never going to be disturbed again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same as in uh, the listeners where uh, the man tries to disturb the silence uh, by here. Is there anybody there? But uh, silence is just too big and uh, all your attempts are just bound to fail. And here she, she doesn't make any much sound, she says, Tee, I can't see you. And uh, that's all she says, that's not much. It's again a little mouse. And of course she uh, just can't uh, be much to the calm of a limited evening. It's much, much bigger than her. So that's where she faces, she faces it. And uh, again, maybe it's just too big for her to, to react. She moved the table of bottles away from the bed to the wall. It's like that's basically the first, the first thing she does. And that's what she so does. In response okay. to so we will not need the medicine now. And she moves it away. It's like, okay, uh, again, if she's a person, then uh, there would be some kind of emotion, reaction, connection. But as a function, as a machine, 
Okay, my function here is to give her medicine. Now she needs no medicine. Now I may go. Away from the battle wall. And tiptoeing gently over the stairs. Turn down the gas in the hall. Again, it's 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 cool. It's really good. Beautiful lines. Cause uh, the lady is dead. Yeah, she understands she that uh, the lady is dead. But, uh, it's so big. But uh, same as the crochet, which lies like. Are you going to finish me? But is it just a symbolic reaction turning down the gas, or is it symbolic? Yes, let's give it a restart. No, we didn't. There were two minutes left, oh, so I think it's... Yeah, and still she is tiptoeing as if... Yeah, as if the lady were alive. Mm -hmm. Or maybe because it's like it's big, it's important, it's solemn, and she feels like she's she has no right to disturb it. It's full of silence now, and she doesn't dare to disturb that silence. So, if we think about the man from the listeners, uh, he was quite, uh, let's say, aggressive. He was trying to break the silence aggressively. Even if, as he was leaving, uh, his horse, the uh, iron upon the stone, metal upon the stone, something. Uh, he was trying to the last to to show who's the boss. Uh, here she just gives up uh, immediately because uh, she has no character. Yeah, she had no identity. She just surrenders immediately. Or oh, she's tiptoeing gently. Because uh, from, uh, uh, let's say, somebody else's point of view, uh, that would make no sense. So there's no one in the house, apparently. Because she turns down the gas in the hall, means there's no one else. There's no one else, but there's going to be people because she'll have to invite the doctor or someone, yeah, so it makes no sense later. to sort of... Well, it does, it does. It, should, it has to go out to call someone, you can't give the gas. Okay. That's dangerous. But still, we have that uh, oh, attic uh, in the upstairs bedroom, which now becomes a sacred place place where deaths happen. Uh, kind of a portal again. And we have double stairs where we have normal life. Yeah, so that again we have uh, uh, the map of uh, the world in here. We have a private space which is on the level of stars uh, which uh, can be uh, open to it or uh, you may try to bolt and blind it and then we have uh, downstairs where you just have normal life it's so called normal and that's where the nurse is uh, uh, that's where she belongs to she comes from there and she returns there and again apparently she doesn't want to be connected to the upstairs tiptoeing gently over the stairs so she is uh, impressed, she can feel it, she feels something, but uh, again, it's not processed, it's not digested, it's still alien to her. And maybe she'll make sense of it uh, later, we don't know, we, we can't see it here. But she, she's had the contact and uh, maybe that changed her. And then of course the last line turned on the gas in the hall. Like uh, now we have no light, we end up blacking yeah. out. 
Yeah. Nicely. And the two one. Yeah. Uh -huh. So for the lady upstairs, oh, there's no downstairs now. It's dark. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, the nurse first uh, said to march to the mantle, carry the fire home. Mm -hmm. She keep the fire burning. And now she turns down the gas. More comments? So, mm -hmm. so in, in general, definitely Minton. Uh, again, something small, a small place, and small people. And a small place in the sense that it's a small village, a small place in the sense that it's a tiny room. And the small people here lost among things. And they face something, some nothing like death. So, what happens? It happens. Will, uh, will it be enough to, to wait here? Will meeting death, someone else's death, face to face, uh, be, will it be enough to wake you up? To understand that uh, someone's death is your death too, or do we just ignore it and go on with our little lives, or do we use it as a chance to make our life big, not in the sense that oh now I will study ten different languages and go and invent something big and cool and then go and uh, cross the Atlantic, just in the sense that you will fill your life, pay attention to who you are, where you are, how you are, or do you just ignore it? Because again, the nurse in, uh, is in the position of uh, potential power, the position where she often comes close to death, to sickness, to all those dark regions which are important to look at. And she never does it. It's so like all oh, that story. Yeah, but isn't it uh, then someone psychologically mindset might say, uh, isn't it a healthy psychological reaction to that? You sort of uh, isolate yourself from all those unpleasant experiences and you do that exactly because you're a healthy uh, well, person. Well, people isolate, they, they don't go anywhere, they stay there and uh, they still affect you. Uh, again, just by turning a blind eye to them, if you don't deal with them, uh, they still destroy you, they keep destroying you just without you noticing it, uh, that's not good. It's like you have a piece of something radioactive and you put it uh, under your bed and you say, well, I can't see it, so it doesn't exist. And you sleep just over it every night. Yeah, it doesn't stop it from being radioactive. So the same is with uh, such experiences and emotions. Well, you don't want uh, to, to go into it uh, too much because uh, they have uh, the gravity pull. Huh? So you come too close, and, uh, that's strong, that may pull you in, and then you'll die. But if you go too far, then you never learn, and then it's pointless. So what you're supposed to do is to find the distance which is safe for you. On one hand, it's close enough for you to work with it. At the same time, it's far enough for you to stay away from it. But here she just ignores it. She just uh, pretends uh, it doesn't exist. Yeah, it's too big, too scary. Oh yeah, they like to say there's people who write books about death and dying. 
yeah. our culture, our culture. Everybody's dead, everybody's dying. But you can't ignore it either. We do have to keep the balance, see. Heavy things, light things, airy fairy, childish, and the dark things. Two sides, they have to be balanced. Again, well, there are people who just say, Oh no, life is horrible, everybody's gonna die, there's no point in living. And that's all. Just the other extreme. So here we need silence. And what do we do? The spoken word is dead, so silence is alive, but uh, silence belongs to uh, death, to infinity. So do we have the gods to meet it, or do we just try to hide away from it. So you decide. Yeah, you, you, me. Everybody decides for themselves. Okay, is it that?